Tim, thank you. I also want to say, oh, this is heavy. And I want to say thank you to David and Alex the Yard for helping uh, organize this. And I was thinking that, I'll see how my energy is, but I was thinking that I kind of wanted to sit down and do this classroom style. But I found, uh, I held a very big seminar in New York, an international seminar, and it, we used it to, to make a product. And I found that what can happen a lot of times is people go and they listen to speakers and at the time it's like, oh wow, that was cool, you know, he was fun, people are funny, people are charming, people are charismatic, I'm all of those things. The, the thing is, the conference ends and you ask the guy, like, what did you learn? And he's like, uh, you know, he's like, do I talk to a girl or something like that. So the real issue is what do we take away from this, right? You all are going to get in your cars or on the trains tomorrow and drive away. And the reason you're here is you probably, let's be honest, you want to fuck more women. I mean, basically. And you also want to improve your confidence. You want to improve your communication. You want to improve all these elements that we talked about in the beginning of the opening. So um, I'm going to try and do this a little differently. I'm going to try and sit for a little bit because um, I get excited when I walk and maybe get my blood. And I'm going to host this a little bit classroom style. So I want to encourage people to raise their hand if I say something that you don't understand or you feel um, is confusing or needs more clarity. And I also know that English isn't the first language of everybody in this room. Uh, I'll stop what I'm saying. This is basically for you, because I know this stuff. And uh, you know, I've done my thing. So this is basically, as a teacher and a coach, to communicate what works to you guys out there. So I'm here for you. So stop me at any time, questions. And then at the end, we'll do a little bit. And of course, you know, in, the, in the breaks and stuff. So thank you, Pim. Thank you, David. Thank you, Alex. I also want to say. The other speakers are really good. I learned quite a bit, actually. And um, they're, all, they're all experts in their respective fields, right? So we can kind of listen. And I don't claim to be an authority on, on many things. Certainly, like, I'm decent in bed, but I'm nowhere near the master that Owen and, and his friend are. Is that right? So you know, I've, I've learned a lot in the uh, opening few hours of this conversation. Um, so let me, uh, let me look at my notes. Can everyone see what that says up there? Do you know your role? Um, let's see this really quickly. All right, I'm going to ask you two simple questions here. The first one is, how many guys are here? And this is on, look, there's one girl in the room. I think there's some in the back. How many guys are here because they want to learn how to screw more women? Just put it up. Come on. <laughs> the guy with the girlfriend is like, <laughs> um, <clears throat> all right. That's, that's how I got into this business, basically. Not because I wanted to screw a lot of women, but because I was screwing a lot of women. And guys were curious. They wanted to know how that worked. Um, and then I have something really small here that's a little hard to see, but we'll come back to it. Um, the second question to you is, anyone out there know why we're called pickup artists? Why is it called pickup art and not a science? Because you can do it everywhere. <clears throat> All right, you can do it everywhere. OK, there's no predefined rules. Maybe everyone does it their own way. Maybe everyone has their own tactics. Everyone's an artist. It's like a painter, right? No two painters paint the same way. And what, with the show of hands, uh, what kind of artists are pickup pick up artists? Social artists. Social artists. What do we call that? I'll give you a hint. Hollywood. Actors. Very good. Actors. All of us who are pickup bar, who are good at, at meeting and sleeping with a lot of women are actors of a sort. And you'll see how this all ties in. What do actors do? What's their main thing that they do? Actors are performers. They play a role. All right. And um, I'm going to write one thing on the board. I learned, uh, having, having given speeches and conferences, it's very easy to throw a lot of stuff your way. But I want to I write one thing, and this is basically the whole thing I'm going to talk about for an hour is going to come out of here. And uh, let, me, let me do this, and I'll turn it around. Hold on. Let's see if I can spell right. Hold on. Bear with, with me. If I could whistle, I would whistle, but I can't whistle. Hold on. Uh, with one minute. Hold on. All right, now I'm going to spill all these markers when I turn this thing around. <clears throat> ah, this is supposed to be dramatic, but this thing weighs, believe me, this thing weighs a lot more than it looks like. All right. 
Can everyone see that? All right, so I'm, and actually, if I wanted to be, let's see if I was, your success in life and with women will be determined by how well you play your role. All right, so my whole talk is going to be about roles. All right, um, and I could have added there also how, how well you interpret other people's roles. This young female is playing a certain part up here today in the way she's dressed and in the way she's groomed. Okay, so she's supposed to, but that's not her whole, that's not her whole uh, reality. And then we've got a couple in the back there. And all of us here, you're, you're here as students, I'm here as a teacher. We're all, we're all playing roles. What I've found, what I've found is that men's number one problem with women is that they don't understand their role. And they try to, they try to uh, be all things to her. They try to, like, we were talking earlier, or we were listening earlier about being a nice guy. So they, they try to bring all their characteristics to bear on the interaction. But really, she's going to respond to you based on exactly what kind of role you have. And the more defined you are, and we'll get into how important this is, not only in pickup, but in sex and relationships, the, the finer points you can put on your role, the more effective you're going to be with getting what you want from her. Um, let me tell you a bit about myself, because this is a, a foreign audience. And I'm well known, fairly well known in the States, but not necessarily here. Um, I'm 34. I'm a, a normal guy. Uh, I've had a series of long-term relationships, about six or seven. I currently have a, a serious girlfriend who's English. And in between those periods, though, I managed to fuck a lot of women, good-looking women that got people's attention. And um, I've had sex with over 200 plus women, and that's just intercourse. I mean, so, and this is in between serious relationships. So like when I'm a free agent, I'm pretty effective. And the, my techniques, and I'm not actually going to spend a lot of time talking specific, uh, specifically about how to do that. I've, I've exhausted that. If you want to do that, you can go to my website or you can read my books. And that will give you like, that will, I guarantee, we have like a, a get laid guarantee. I mean, I will teach you how to get sex. Hold on. Mm. <laughs> but I, I can't do a conference if I'm rehashing old material. I have, to like, I have to do something fresh. So I spent some time thinking before the conference in New York a few months ago and, and leading up to it, like, what, what, is really, what is really the one thing that guys don't get right? And the, and the thing is, they don't know how to be, basically, they don't, they don't know their role in the sexual interaction. And, and you'll see how powerful it is uh, when you do know your role. I'll give you some examples. Um, so I was a natural, and I, in, in 2005, I wrote something called Getting Late in NYC that got, it basically debunked a lot of myths about what you, you're supposed to, you know, we say, oh, you meet a girl, you're, you're nice to her, you're supposed to respect, I don't think we need to respect all women, actually, to go against a little bit about the mandate of the thing. I mean, you, you don't want to break the law and stuff, but you can be cocky and a bit of a jerk, too. I mean, that turns a girl on also. So the... But we have this, like, for, at least in the States, this formulaic thing, like you're a nice guy, da da da, oh, you're friendly, then we'll take you for dinner, then we, we treat the girl nice, and this and this and this. And then you end up, a lot of guys end up with nothing. They end up with no sex, they're out of money, they're out of time, they're horny, they're frustrated. So I wrote something in 2005 because I would see all these guys and I was like, oh, they're not getting it. So I wrote something and it became this huge success. Just as a joke, it was only 17 pages, it wasn't, it was self published. And then after that, I was invited on national TV. And I was written up in magazines, and, and I got a business partner, so we built a global business out of this. But that's how it kind of started. Um, and now I live in New York, and I travel internationally at, at times, and I'm a dating coach and, and sex coach. Um, and also, let me just say this, too. A lot of the stuff I know isn't just myself. I have a buddy who's my age who's had sex with almost 400 girls. So, and he's not even a good-looking guy. He's not like a schlub. He dresses pathetically, and he's like... He's doing nothing with his life, really. Sometimes those guys score the most girls, actually, because they have the time. You need a lot of time. That's, that's what goes back to what the guy said. Like, if you really get into this business, you'll see like direct is bad because it cuts out all the BS. So um, what, I, what, what I'm going to teach you and talk about comes out not just of my own experience, but sharing methods and, and ideas with some very successful so guys who have a lot of success with women. Um, so and I also want to say this. It seems for talking at the break, there seems to be all levels of guys here. There's like some very sweet, shy guys that, I, actually David was saying I didn't kiss a girl there, he was 33 or something like that. So we probably have some similar guys like that in the audience, all the way to some like quasi rock stars who are like tearing through Trojans and Durex condoms like it's going on style. So we have, we probably have the range here. So I'm gonna, this, this will apply to all you guys out there, not just beginners and not just experts. Um, so let me tell you a story to tell you how effective this is. 
Um, when you get, when you start, it ties into the first speaker too about how you can, you can, women are, the funny thing is, women are extremely, uh, they're very intuitive, but they'll let, if they're, if you play it right, they'll let you push things so fast, so quickly, so fast, like, like and so sexual so fast. I, I was in New York talking to, like I came up talking to, with a buddy, but he fell out, like he got blown out or whatever, but tall blonde girl and a girl that looked just like Britney Spears, clearly like very confident body language, owning the place like guys were into. And I went up and, and I wasn't even hustling really, I was just in a screw around mood. And I started talking to her and me, I, I, I got the vibe. Less than five minutes after, four minutes after talking to her, I had my hand in her skirt, feeling her pussy from behind. And the reason I tell you that is not to brag, but if you know what your role is going into an interaction, you can have your hand, you can have your hand inside a girl in like three minutes, forget or kiss her within 30 seconds. I just I say that because it'll blow expectations out of the water for some of you guys out there. Like, is that possible? I got to do all. No, you have to communicate very clearly who you are in her life and who she is. Look, we're all well-rounded people. We have a lot of facets, but when you're interacting with a woman. You need to hone that down to a very sharp edge so she knows how to play her role. It, a lot of the problem guys have is they're too blunt. They try and be like the brother and the provider and the sex object. I hope, I also, um, I may reiterate stuff because from my experience having, I gave you some of my stats, this is the single biggest hurdle for guys and everything flows downstream from here. So they'll try and be the brother and the provider and the nice guy and they're also horny and this and that, and what, when you come that blunt to a girl, what does she do? She blunts you out too. She becomes the sister, and the sweetheart, and the nice girl, and the Madonna, and maybe the slut, and all this kind of stuff. Um, but you don't meet point to point, like, like, a, like a, a horny guy and a sex, sexy girl, sex object to sex object. You don't do that, because you're not focused enough, because your role isn't defined. So we're gonna talk about a bit, but when you have a very defined role, you can move very quickly into a woman's sexual space, like r ridiculously quickly. I, I mean, within like three or four minutes. So, and I'm, you know, like, if not full sex, like, so it's possible. Um, let me let me see what I have here. It moves you, okay? This is a. I almost wrote this here, but I wanted to keep it very simple. And I'm sure you guys have probably read the literature out there and blah blah blah. That everything hints at this, but this is probably the most concise way to say it that I've heard. Mm. When you're interacting with a woman, you're either, you're never stationary. You're only doing one of two things. You're moving closer to sex or you're moving farther away. Every decision you make and every minute that elapses when you're spending time with a woman is either bringing you closer to having sex with her or farther away. It's like a, the analogy is a boat. If a boat with a full sail up is sitting on the ocean, it's not just going to stay stationary. It'll be drifted. And if you don't steer it, you're going to smash into the rocks. So a lot of guys don't know, um, and it, everything ties into this, leadership, taking charge, driving the, inter what do you, whatever you want to call it. If you are not moving the interaction towards sex, then it's probably moving away from it. And she's putting you in a different category. So keep that in mind. Um, let me tell you another story. Oh, oh thank you, man. That, that's really sweet. We're, we're proper here with glasses, no, no bottle swigging. Thank you, Pim. Um, if you, and I'll tell a story in a second, but if you really, uh, we saw the hands in the beginning, like who wants to have more sex with women? If you really want to have more sex with women, you need to know your role. And when you have a role, you're goal oriented, right? Like an actor, that's why I started with talking about a pickup artist is an actor. When you're acting, they usually tell you what's your motivation. Like I'm feeling an actor, the director might say, um, your, your brother betrayed you by sleeping with your wife, so that's what motivates you in the scene. Go in there. So you know, and your goal is to kill your brother. So, so your role uh, precipitates your goal. I hope that's clear to people. If you have a well-defined role, you know where you're going. So, or if you know where you're going, you can define your role. So having sex as the outcome allows you to be in, in your role and also to make decisions at every instance, because women, and I write extensively about this, but the, the bottom line is women much rather have a long window to evaluate you as a sexual partner, uh, where guys, can, and, and, uh, it's happened to me many, many, many times, like a super eligible guy can get DQ'd on one minor thing. Actually, they did a study, the other guys are like this. They did a study of um, 
men and women, and they, they asked they asked the guys, what were the hundreds and hundreds of guys, what were the reasons that you didn't go on a second date with a girl? And there were only three through the whole group. She wasn't cute enough, we, we did, she wasn't interested interesting enough, or she wasn't interesting, I can't even remember the third one, but there were only three, like guys disqualified for a very limited set of real reasons. Women, when they surveyed them, had 300 reasons why they disqualified guy. He didn't get, he didn't stand up when I came and sat at the table. He, he ordered tap water instead of a bottle of water at the table, so I figure he's not going to treat me well in the future. This and, so the point is that women, no, you're laughing because you know what it's like. So the point is that women have a very, very nuanced set of criteria that they apply to a guy before they're going to offer themselves self sexually. And to gather that much information, most women who are sober, and uh, most women will want to extend that window of observation. So they're in no rush to sleep with you, really. Like, if they're, if, they, if, they, if they're attracted and they're interested, they don't need to sleep with you today. They can wait three weeks, because you have your whole life to have sex together. So what difference? Is, that's a female mentality. But a guy who's horny, he wants it right now. We're visually stimulated. You want to do it. So the point of that is that, that women are usually going to try and deflect your, your, your attempt to, to seduce her quickly. And guys who have a lot of sex, and the truth is it's like a handful of guys. Not, I used to say like 5% of the single guys sleep with 95% of the girls. Is that, that's how I was in New York. Like my buddy and I, we basically had a monopoly on everything above 57th Street. Because we, and we actually would date the same, sometimes we'd catch the same girl. Like he'd, he'd find her like a, six months later, like catch and release, and then he would have her. So the, the point is like, um, Women are going to try and deflect, and if, you, if you're goal-oriented and, you, and you're playing your role, you, you'll const at every juncture when there's a decision to, make, to be made, you'll reevaluate, like, is this bullshit or is this going to lead to the bedroom? Is this a, is this a opportunity for me to spend money or is this going to lead to sex? Is this going to waste time and then we can't do anything until tomorrow, maybe? Or is this going to happen now? So you constantly, the guys who know, the guys who have a lot of sex are constantly managing the process. It's like a sport. It's like what's happening second to second to second. And a girl will never make it easy for you. I mean, that, well, obviously, the irony is you have a girlfriend and she wants to have sex all the time. So it's a whole different thing. But until you've broken that, until you've broken her in, so to speak, until that's happened, you're gonna, she's going to constantly say, no, no, let's give it time. Let's get, not just verbally, but in terms of her planning and all that. And if you don't have a very sharp point and know where you're going and say, no, redirect, 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 you're going to you're going to end up being one of these guys, and you probably have if you're sitting here. I've been that guy who's like spending money and time and resources, uh, not driving the interaction forward. So next time you're with a woman, not a friend, but a woman you find sexually attractive, and you want to sleep with, constantly ask yourself, like, in this moment, what am I doing to advance the sexual thing? And probably a lot of us in here have spent time, minutes, hours, like doing nothing, just hanging out. So it's, uh, it's the kind of thing where, not, you know, you, you can start hanging out. I'm sure people have been in the situation. You have a date at 9 or hang out at 9, and, and come 11 p.m., you've made no additional progress. You're no closer to sleeping with this girl. Whereas a hustler comes in, and he's, boom, he's got her, he's, he has his hand up her, her skirt in like 20, 20 minutes. So it's like you have to know what your role is and, how, and, and what your goal is. Um, let me tell you a story. I was in New York a while ago, and... Um, this girl that I had known a while, she flew in from Chicago with three girlfriends. And I had a couple buddies. I was entertaining them. And we all met up. And there was sexual chemistry. And I had fooled around with this girl before, the mine. And the, we had met at this restaurant for drinks. And we were moving. So this is a classic thing. And this is why groups are so difficult. All, three of us, all six of us came out. And it's like, all right, now what next? Right? A leader has to emerge to say, we're going to do this. Um, and I can tell a funny story that someone in this room will laugh about. But the, the, um, we walked out of the thing, and we all standing there. And these girls wanted to go to a strip club, OK? Which sounds like a, it's, a, it's a good idea. And most guys would be like, oh, yeah. But no one, you're not going to get laid in a strip club. Hold on. What you will do is spend a lot of money, and they'll get drunk, and they'll get tired. And then the night will come, and they'll be like, oh, oh, it's such a good time. Let's get together tomorrow. You know, and then they'll go. So. She and the other guys were like, yeah, let's go. And obviously, we're going to pay because we're the guys. And, they, and I said, no, absolutely not. And I, I put my foot down, and I said, let's go back to my place, and we'll figure it out. 
and keeping it vague. And I, if you want to get into the technical spot, part of how to do this, we can talk after and you can read my stuff. I mean, I get into excruciating detail about exactly what to do moment to moment. It's like watching a, you know, the World Cup play by play, like what's happening. But that's not what I want to talk about today. And um, she, I said, no, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to my place and have a drink and figure it out. And what happened was we broke in separate cabs and I got a blowjob on the way going down to my house because I, I knew how to, to, to handle the interaction and I knew what I wanted out of it. And I didn't want to go in public to a strip club, pay money, and have this like be teased all night. I wanted like results. And so because I'm this, I was decisive in that, in, in that moment and I knew my role and I was sexually interested in this girl and I wanted a certain outcome, I was able to, even five other people, I was able to totally steer the agenda. And you want to talk about confidence and leadership, that's what it is. It's knowing, that's why this ties in so fundamentally. It's knowing exactly who, who you are and what your role is in a given situation so that you can execute, okay? And you talk, I mean, it's not just here, it's in business, world leaders, world speakers, whatever. It doesn't get any good to stand up here and be like, oh, but, 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 you know, it's, it, all, it also ties in with clarity. If you know what your role is, you know how to communicate it clearly. So um, that's it. Let me see what this says. Isolates and it takes a call. No, <laughs> isolates. Oh, yeah, I was gonna talk a little bit about, um, yeah, I was going to talk a little bit about how to how to actually have sex, but we can we can come back to this. Um, so, and in turn, I mean, setting up the thing. So, let me move on a little bit. Uh, what I was talking about with that Britney Spears type of girl, right? When you have when you when you're inhabiting a role as an actor, okay, I'm sure there's some shy guys in here or guys like the. That's not the first time I've done that, by the way. Like, I've been extremely sexually bold, and you know, I've, I, have I gotten slapped? I've probably gotten slapped. I mean, I'm pretty quick to like, if a, you know, if a girl's like, hey, phew. but it's, um, you know, it's cat and mouse. I have fun with them, but, and I've definitely pushed up, as our first speaker said, she has a, she has a comfort band, so to speak, how he bent it like that. Push up against that, like, we're the men, right? In the old days, I, I, I remember when I was on Dr. Phil, I was talking about being cavemen. Guys have been pussified a bit. I mean, basically, you should know what the law is, and you should, if you're horny, push up against the law. Don't, don't, I mean, don't rape the girl and don't go crazy, but you have a lot, a lot of guys don't take the shot. And then the guys who do take the shot are the ones who sleep with all the attractive women, and the other guys are angry. Like, women will take a lot more pushing and a lot more, um, a lot more bold behavior than, than probably most of the men in this room realize. And like I said, that's not the first time that I very quickly transitioned. And she knows her body. She knows what it feels like. She's made a decision in the first 60 seconds if she wants her hands, your hands on her. And if you push that, that's what turns a girl on, right? We're animals. So, and, and in the old days, before civil society, before anything like this, it was caveman style. You just grabbed the girls. I'm not advocating that. But I think it, th this audience could benefit from being a little bit more assertive um, in terms of stuff. And so the question is, why extend your behavior? Uh, how do roles allow you to extend your behavior outside the comfort zone? Because you don't have, it's not you. You're just playing a role. And it, that's a good way to kickstart it. In other words, let me give you an example. You're at a bar or a club or something, and there's a hot girl with a miniskirt. And you're thinking, you walk in and you say, God, look at that ass. It's like peaches sitting up. The fabric falls over it a little, so it's away from the leg. You know, all you guys know what I'm talking about. Nice, like, like little goose bumps on her legs because she's a little chilly into beautiful high heels. And she's leaning forward and you're just like, oh. What you really want to do, you don't want to talk to her, you just want to grab it, right? That's what most guys want to do. Well, you can't do that. But what you can do is you can get into a role where you realize, like, you're that guy. You're that, that like, hustler who's going to go up and take shots that are outrageous and see what happens. So you can, you can just walk up to her and be like, hey, what's up? And stand, you know, too close to her. But, you know, you've kind of boxed her against the bar and she feels your presence and she's, and, and, and we can demonstrate this later, we don't need to. And, and she, um, she gets turned on and you can be like, you can start rubbing here a little bit and suggestively and then with your knee on her leg and like go, you'd be surprised. And I, that's maybe an assignment for over the next, uh, I was gonna say tonight, but we're gonna have all these guys assaulting women and knocking. And I don't wanna be responsible. But uh, over the next couple weeks to scale up what you feel comfortable like, like 200% because I guarantee you, you're not taking full advantage of, of these women. And believe me, they can handle themselves. A hot girl, has been put in so many positions where guys are assertive that she knows exactly how to step away to deflect verbally, physically. I wouldn't worry about it. And 
Um, so you go up and start talking, and then you, you can start teasing. And you know, you ask if she's wearing underwear and feel here. So a lot of girls don't, you know, and you feel the, there's no band, which turns you on, right? Because she's not wearing underwear and her skirt's only. And you can play, and the reason I'm saying that is, in that, that's not really you maybe, but you're playing the role of that hustler. So just uh, abdicate, uh, people know what that means, abdicate responsibility. In other words, say, you know what, um, I'm Jeremy, Jeremy wouldn't do that, but tonight I'm playing a role as Christian, and Christian's a hustler who fucks a lot of girls, so he would do that. So allow yourself to get into a role and to go and be uh, more in, in, in a, assertive both physically and verbally with the girl and, and stretch your comfort zone and don't take responsibility for it because you're just play acting. And what will happen is you'll be, you'll be like, oh my God, she's letting me do this. Like, I still do it, but every time I reach behind a girl and go in her panties after I've talked to her for like three minutes. And oh, by the way, this girl was having, I love this too, this turns girls on so much. She was having a conversation with her friend and, and so the friend didn't know that I was feeling her up, but she knew. And so it's a little dirty secret, right? And, 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 and she didn't stop me, and that's a very exciting moment when you cross that line, like past the, the waistband into b underneath, and you're like, oh my god, this girl, obviously she can feel it, is letting me feel her up in public. How exciting is that? But you can only get there if you, if you play the role of that guy. And a lot of us in here say, oh, that's not me, that's not me. Well, I'm saying as an exercise, I give you permission to go out and do that. Okay, and you get any shit, come back and, and, and send them my way. Um, all right. <laughs> uh, so, God, I wrote these notes. These are, these are a terrible way to write notes. There's too many words on this page. You have a, um, let me explain a little bit more if it's not 100% clear. And feel free to raise your hand if you have any questions that you think like, oh my God, this is crazy. Do you really mean this? Um, in terms of how, how roles work. You know why um, you can take an idiot and you can put him on a factory floor on a, a assembly line process and he can just go like that all day long stamping out dyes or something like that. And he doesn't need a lot of education, he doesn't need to think for himself. Why is that possible? Why can a guy do that? Without, you can take a guy who hardly has a work functional IQ and you can do that. Does anyone know? It's repetitive. Repetitive and? Not complex. Not complex and it's very narrowly defined. In other words, he knows his role as that guy who pulls like that. So it's a very easy arrangement. The machine is there and he just goes. He doesn't think about other things he's supposed to be. He just, so also let me give you another analogy. Like a chef who's making an omelet. Like he needs certain tools, but he knows his purpose is to make a decent omelet. And he has a pan and he has a, he's not thinking about like his past or his relationship with his mother or he has to get uh, gas in the car or like this or that or that. He's just focused on his role as a chef in that moment. And if he's really focused, he'll make a good omelet. So the point is, like, if, if, if your role is well-defined and you know what you want to do, you want your outcome, now, of course, this applies to, like, girls, right? But if you have that mentality, you can make a perfect omelet. And you can, you can pull the lever repeatedly. What happens to most men in a lot of, from what I, I'm not from the pickup community, so I haven't read very much of it, but a lot, some of what I see is that, they don't, they don't hone down on this. They don't say, listen, the object is we're two animals. She's a female part of the animal. I'm male. I need to put my sperm in her. And there's a certain dance we need to do. What, how do I do that? They don't get that, that, that basic. But really, it is that basic. And if you, have, if you know that, it'll get a lot of the bullshit out of the way. It's a very clear path. Oh, this, uh, a friend's joined, me, uh, joined us today. And uh, I remember we were in Luxembourg together. And we went out to dinner with these two attractive women. I had just met my girl, and he had been dating this one for a while. And we, we all had dinner, and we piled in the car. And I wanted to nail his friend, right, or the girlfriend. And we piled in the car, and then it's always that with groups, the transition. It's like, what's the next step? Where do we go now? And we drove a little, and we went to drop the one girl off. And it was that moment. Either I go up with her, or she leaves the car. I mean, I've, I've seen, I'm old enough, and I've done this enough. I know how all the circumstances, I know how all the, what the, all the outcomes are. Or I say, I'm, I'm a nice guy, and I'm like, oh, OK, next time. Uh, and she gets out and goes up. I never see her naked. Or, and then we drive away, and then I talk to the couple. I'm like, oh, and then I get a good night's sleep. And you know, I can do that when I'm 60. So, um, but basically, she started to get out, and I said, no, I'm coming up with you. Wait a minute. And she didn't even invite me up. I hardly knew this girl. But I knew if I didn't make a bold action right there, this is talking about at every moment, you're either 
moving away from getting laid or moving towards getting laid. And I said, I knew if I don't if I don't exit the car and go up into her apartment with her, I have no chance. I have no access to her vagina. Okay, that's very on a very basic <laughs> level. So, um, and she was like, and women res believe it or not, women respond to bull. Why do five percent of the guys fuck ninety five percent of the? Because the guys who put their hand up their crotch in a full crowd of bar while she's talking to her best friend and she, she le pushes into it and it turns her on. That's the guy she wants to fuck, not the guy who's waffing around and, and, and she doesn't know, is this guy my friend or does he want to screw me? We did those exercises, right, with like compliant, uh, was it compl it was, com no, no, uh, congruence. So when you're bold, you signal something to a woman. So, and I said, no, I'm coming out with you, we're going to go up. And they drove off and I went up and, and, and I fought like hell, but she wouldn't let me, I got her naked, but she wouldn't let me, and I fucked her in New York a few months later. But, um, all right, so you understand a bit of how important roles are. Um, I want to, porn was mentioned here a little bit, and I don't know why uh, in the earlier thing. Um, I guess, and some of you had came up to me at the break and talked about, I was on some very major national television uh, shows in, in New York and in, in the United States, talking about, n not as graphic as this, because this is men here and we're private, but um, talking about basically man's need and right to behave normally and not as an earlier speaker said it's like it, it creeps women out when we hide this stuff down right it's look a, a fully mature sexually woman like she can take care of herself I mean she knows the power she has in her room with her body and her, her attitude and she's had plenty of sexual experience like being a full sexual male around her is not gonna is, you're not hurting anybody's feelings but you're gonna creep her out if you're really horny for her and you're covering it up and one of the things about roles is that today I think a lot of guys are confused about their roles and they're also ashamed about like having a natural, they'll go secretly and look at porn, but when it comes to like having, you know, grabbing their balls and having a boner and want to fuck, they're like, they hide it under a bush. But it's, you don't have to be this graphic with a girl when you're first talking to her, or you can, and it's kind of funny and, and usually not that effective. But the, the, to own that and to feel that and then, and, then, and then move forward with that and not feel ashamed about it, because that shame will cause you to, hesitate in the moment when you need to be bold. And of course, once you get through the interaction and you're both naked after having sex, everyone loves each other and it's all warm and fuzzy and sweet. But it's that dance beforehand that very few men know how to get right. So, um, and also, aside from how they feel about it, men have shame attached and, have, and maybe are confused, but they also don't have the tools until recently. And that's what this whole seduction community is. It, it's teaching us how to, how to get the proper tools uh, so that, like, we, you know, I held a whole seminar in New York talking about, like, where, first of all, mindset, but then where are the girls, how do you identify which ones, and then every step from saying hi to da 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 to the bedroom, to, to on her back, to taking the clothes off, every element of that. So we now have the tools available to actually do this if we want to, which, you know, five years ago or ten years ago before this whole thing took off, we didn't. So, um, all right, and I want to tell a story. I mean, I've had plenty of failures with women, too. Uh, I'm talking some about the successes, but like I learned through trial and error. I mean, I blew it with some ridiculously hot women. That I, it's pissing me off. Um, what happens if you don't know your role? I'm, I'm sure many of you have been in that position. What is it? It's called indecision, not knowing what to do in a given moment. Have you been there before, where you got a chance with a girl? And yet, oh, there we go, hands up, hands up. Everyone, oh, everyone's been indecisive with women. You had, somehow, you were able to get the attention of this hot girl, and whether it was trying to get her number, or she's out on a date with you, or she's back at your place, and you're not sure if she's, or you're trying to go for the first kiss. All of us in this room have had moments where we're un, undecided. Yes, we'd like to, but we don't know how, and we're afraid. We're afraid of ourselves, we're afraid of how she'll respond. So these moments of indecision, when you don't know what to do, they are all a product of not knowing your role. Let me say that again because it's so fundamental. When you have a moment of indecision with a woman, or actually with anything in your life, it's because you don't know your role in the moment. Okay? So if you know your role, especially when it comes to sex, it's to fuck her, you always know what to do. You know what the next move is. If she's wearing her clothes, they need to come off. If she's in public, she needs to be in private. If she's standing up, she needs to be on her back. All these things that basically like can move to this. If, she's, if you don't know her, you've got to know her. If she doesn't give you the phone number, you've got to get the phone number. If, if, if she's on the other end of it, you need to arrange so you're in the same proximity. So everything is very clear when you know what you want. 
Okay, so you first have to ask yourself, maybe for some of you guys, this isn't it. It's not about screwing a lot of chicks, maybe. And I'm going to touch a bit, because I have a girlfriend now. Touch a bit about relationship stuff. Um, and we, I think this is pretty standard knowledge, but if you, if, you, if you don't know what you're doing with the girl, if you're indecisive, she is going to put you in, in one of several categories. She's going to make you the provider, right? If you're a decent guy and you come present yourself at a girl repeatedly, she's going to, oh, yeah. I have a question. Uh, yeah. How would you define that role? Well, at the beginning, I, I don't want to talk about too many things, so I'm talking about how to a achieve a full sexual result with a woman. Sex, essentially. Yes, but how would you describe the role of a seducer? Or, or oh, okay, good question. The, good, the question is how do you describe the role of a seducer? And the answer is it's a guy whose every move is towards sex. There's never a down period. You know in, in football, they play for 45 minutes and they take a half time and then there's 45. Their goal, their role, is to put that little white ball in the net, and they know it. And then at the referee, at the, at the halftime, when there's a break, their goal is not to do that. Their goal is to, to hydrate their body and sit and listen to the coach. What I'm saying, a seducer is someone who has, he doesn't have a halftime. He plays all 90 minutes straight, and he has one goal, and that's to get inside the girl, basically. Um, if, you don't, if you're indecisive and you, don't, and, you, and you don't know your role, which a lot of us probably have lost that, we don't know what we're, we like the girl, but we don't know what the next step is. Yeah, go ahead. What do I have to distinguish uh, my, um, I can hear you. Yeah, you go ahead. Um, in front of the girl, um, if I want to have sex or if I want to have a uh, real relationship. Okay, which includes sex, right? Yes. Okay. You can, the girl, the girl will pace you. So I would say push for it and she'll, oftentimes if a girl, I don't want to say anything too stereotypical, but um, relationships can often come if the girl resists for three or four dates and she gives the chance. The reason women do that is that they, Women with high self-esteem, they want to showcase their personality. They want to say, here, listen, don't just go for the whole. I have a whole, whole life I want to show you. I'm a great person because a guy gets very distracted. So they stop it, stop it, and they get to showcase themselves for over three nights, for example, until the guy says, wow, this is a quality person I want to spend time with. And then they'll give sex up once they've shown you who they are. But a lot of girls who give it up quickly, they don't have a chance to show because the guys, or if you're very good, you get in there. Like, so it doesn't they don't have a chance to show you how great they are. And then after a guy has sex, that's what he was after. If he, if he thinks, ah, whatever, I'm not, that imp I'm not that interested, then that's how you, you can have like, one, you know, a, a string of one night stands or this and that. I'm gonna get to relationships in a second, but. But it sounds like the, uh, the women needs, because she, she treats you like this or like this. She, she shows her personality or she shows not. And well, I'm saying a guy constantly presses but again, th there's a legal system. There's a law. You can't do certain things beyond it. And she'll she'll leave. Like, like she can. Uh, if your girl says, "I'm not coming home with you," how are you going to get her? And I'm not going to the bathroom. I'm not going to do this. I mean, you can't isolate her. So then it's it's over for that night. So what I'm saying is, you can press, but she can pace it. She can say, "Yes, I'm interested, but not right now." And often, beautiful girls are very good at pacing. So I, I wouldn't worry about. They'll pace you, in terms of. If they're interested, they'll, they'll let you push, but they'll, they'll say, okay, not now. I need more time. I need more time. Do we have another question? I thought I saw. So, oh, yeah. Uh, what, what do you mean by pacing? Slowing it down, like deciding when things will happen. In a very simple schematic, it's like when a kiss happens, when they'll let you touch their breasts, when they'll get naked, when they'll allow sex. Like a girl has some kind of timetable in her head, you know. <laughs> so they'll in terms of when they're comfortable doing that and, what, and how, how they value the interaction. So oftentimes, guys who are great boyfriend material have a hard time getting laid because the, the girl likes him and she doesn't want to ruin it by having sex too early. So she'll hesitate, at least in the States, that's the case. I have, I have one friend who's a very good looking guy. He's a medical doctor, went to Harvard. He's like a perfect, well, he has a girlfriend now, but he always had a hard time getting laid because girl, girls would, would fall in love right away and say, oh, he's going to be my husband. I don't want to give it up too soon. It's like, I, I, I. 
the problem for you. <laughs> so if you don't, if you're indecisive, what happens is the girl chooses, okay? And she puts you in a category. She can put you in a category of you're the one who pays for her. Okay, I'm sure you guys have been in that situation that where she says, oh, he's a nice guy, he, he wants my attention, and he's willing to pay. She can put you in a category of like a hangout friend to go to the movies. She can put you in a category of like talking on the phone, someone at the break share, like where you're just her girlfriend, uh, where she complains and uh, she's not sleeping it. Or she, she can put you in the, my leg feels, I'm gonna stand up in a second because the room is getting low energy. But um, she, can, she can put you in a role of, of the guy she sleeps with. And actually in Japan, which is a very interesting country, and I went there to, with a hustler buddy of mine, to, to very beautiful women, very stylish. Hard to get laid in a way because of the language barrier, but um, they have actually in Japan, culturally, they have names for things. They have, they have, um, they have guys who are, who are movie boys, driving, driving boy, food boy, shopping boy, and sex boy. And when, if you become a category of guy in, in Japan, you have a, often a very hard time migrating to a different category because you, you didn't make a bold move in the beginning and she put you into her own category. And now you're the guy, every time you go out, she expects you to pay. Or she only calls you when she wants to see the latest movie or like when the clothes are fresh from, from, from the catwalk. So if you're, not, if you're not bold and make a decision what you want, you're, she's going to choose. And there's nothing worse than a girl choosing, to be honest, with this kind of stuff because we're the men. We're supposed to lead. Yeah. Oh, is that a, ca a hand or a camera? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So, um, let's see. Um, God, I hate when I can't read my notes. But let me tell you a story about indecision. I was living in New York in about 2000, um, 2004, and I, I was doing fine with the women, but I still dropped the ball all the time because I, I didn't know what to do. I basically didn't know my role. And I, I met this, I mean, picture this girl, fucking hot. She was half Brazilian, half Italian. You can imagine. My buddy, when he met her, he's like, that's a screamer. You just knew, like, in sex, she'd be like, ah, like, pulling hair, smashing shit, like, hot, hot. <laughs> Anyhow, she was into me, and she gave me her number, and we met once and took a walk around the, the, the Metropolitan Museum, which was not a great move because it was, like, daytime, and I, I think I put my arm around her, but I didn't go in for the kiss, so already it's like I'm not a bold guy. Already I, I'm, she liked me, and I'm already a, a low level. Unfortunately, guys, women respond to guys who fuck them. I hate to tell you that. But um, uh, I was already uh, uh, demoted. And then I, I asked her out on a date. It was when I used to take girls to dinner. And I got her. She lived near me, actually. And we went. She came back to my house at like 6.30. And she sat on the couch. And she said, so what do you want to do? Which is like a test. She didn't even know it was a test, but it's a test. And in retrospect, I should have stood her up, spinned her around, or given her a hug, kissed her, and bring her into the bedroom and said, I want to show you something, and start making out. And even if we didn't have sex, at least get it hot, right? Instead, I said, let's go for dinner. And we went, we drove all the way downtown, we had dinner. And meanwhile, at dinner, she's, she's like touching her breasts, and she's saying, she was, she had a great ass and like maybe B cup, and she was like, you know, I've always wanted bigger breasts. My mom says they're fine. She's telling me this, they're fine. She's trying to make like sex. And I'm eating this meal, this big pasta meal, but how, by the end of it, I was like so full and tired. And I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, and anyhow, we, we got in a cab, and, and we drove back uptown, and, and I, we pulled up in a place, and I was like, all right. There was no sexual vibe. It was like two dudes. Like, I was tired. There was, nothing, there was no energy left. And that's it. She's like, eh. I never, actually, I just became Facebook friends with her now. She's six years older, and, it's, and I have a girlfriend, so it's like a whole different dynamic. But um, the... It never happened after that because I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know my role was to fuck this hot, sexy girl and then go eat. All right, work. Uh, I have an old mentor. His name's Dominic. He's an ex mobster. He's about seventy, and he says, "No, I was younger." He says, "No, no, you fuck them and then you go eat. You don't eat and fuck them." He says, "You wait. You, 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 know, you get. You work up an appetite." So again, that gets to knowing your role. Um, let's see. Hold on. Okay. The other, the other cool thing about roles, and, and we're going to get to women in a second, how women play roles, is that, um, is that you, can, you can play into their fantasy, okay? I don't care what type of girl she is. All girls have had a handful of fantasies. They've had rape fantasies. They've had threesome fantasies. They've had fantasies with older men. They've had, so almost every girl has a whole, but 
if, if she's going to act out on that or be the bad girl for one night, you have to play that role that locks right into her fantasy. And so by developing, developing um, this edge and this side of yourself, you'll be that guy that women take a chance with and, and have the one night stand with if you want to play the field like that. Or do crazy stuff or give you a blowjob in a club that they've never done before. Because your, your, your role for them, from their perspective, is that dude for that night. And if you're into that, it's great because you can act out that fantasy with them. Um, one other thing about roles, like look how I'm dressed, right? I have white shoes on, I have a green corduroy, I'm wearing sunglasses, which is some people think is rude maybe. I have a hat on, I'm not shaven. Like this is all a role, right? I have a lot of other sides. I don't hang out with my parents like this necessarily. My mom would be like, get those fucking sunglasses off. Like it's, so, but for, for the purpose of pickup and demonstrating, because um, I'm, I'm, I'm doing what I want and I'm doing what I love. So I'm, I'm able to be in a certain role. So my point is that I've seen how people dress here and it's, I'm not that impressed, I hate to say. It's like, I mean, New York is a fashion capital, but you want to, you know, you can get somewhere, you can get your role somewhat advanced by, by dress, groom, attitude. In the seduction community, they call it peacocking. I don't love that term with like big hats and all this shit here, like cast, you know, canes and pendulums necessarily. But you can use your wardrobe to, to, to stimulate her imagination and, and get you into character when you go out. So you can act out of your comfort zone. You can do things that you wouldn't normally do. Like, you know, the nice Joe who's at home, family man, has a dog, has a good job, went to, you know, studied university, is going to be a doctor, for example. Maybe he's not the badass playboy who's going to fuck some chick, up, you know, at some nightclub. But if you want to do that, you can get into the role and act that out, yeah. So you say that, uh, uh, that you can dress uh, like a sexual stereotype, maybe the rock star or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, women respond, of course, different types of women respond to different stuff, but as long as you stand out, and uh, a guy here had a cool jacket with flowers on it, like anything that you do that, that's, someone just said, what he said, he says, differentiate yourself in a positive way from other men, and women will take notice. That just gets you an opener, right? Like the, that gives you some curiosity. You've got to work it, but yeah, the clothes can help. So keep in mind, is your role, you're, you obviously spent money and you spent time out of your schedule and you drove here, et cetera. Like this is important to you. So spending some time thinking about like being that guy and what it requires in terms of grooming and clothes and attitude is, is, is worth your while. Um, I talked about, about women's fantasies, threesomes, fast sex, anonymous sex. Women want this kind of stuff. But they only want it with a certain character. They're not going to want to do it with someone who reminds them of their brother or like the safe. They don't want to. They're not going to do that with a safe guy. They do that with a dangerous guy who's not boyfriend material. Why? Because if they have if they have dirty sex in a bathroom, for example, or like really quickly, they can do it with a with a not safe guy because they know it's never going to become a relationship. So that's that relationship they can walk away from. If they like a guy, if he's a good guy. They're not going to try that because it could damage the po I talked about this a second ago. Damage the possibility of a relationship. Um, let's see. Uh, and before I get on to to win roles for women, because I think this is, and I'm going to talk about mate selection when you're looking for a girlfriend, what to look for. I want to say two things that are. I'm kind of just shoehorning shoehorning these in here, but since we're talking about roles and being real men, um, the first thing is everyone in here has fear. Okay, I have fear. We all have fear. But um, the, you, you need to tackle the thing you fear the most first. If you start tackling things you fear the most at the front, life gets easier. There's a, there's a famous saying, I don't know if it's Buddhist or what, but they say, do the easy thing, perpetuate the hard life. Do the hard thing, arrive at the easy life. So always do the, hard, the hardest thing first and the thing you fear the most. And I also, people talk about fear like, oh, I'm going to jump out of a plane, I'm going to bungee jump, this and that. That's not what really people fear. The thing that people fear the most are one-on-one -on -one interactions with people that are going to get uncomfortable or, or there's a lot of unknown. That's really what people, a phone call they don't want to make, a hot girl they have to approach, saying something disappointing to their parents, calling the bank and saying, I don't have the money for my house, the mortgage. These are what we fear, the interactions with other people. So keep that in mind. And if, if, if it ties into confidence. I wanted to say this. Like, if you work on your fears, if maybe even a list of all your fears especially as they relate to people, and just start working through those by just walking through the fear and doing it. And may, you'll see that there's not really, and then it all relates to talking to hot girls because they're just people too. Um, 
And another thing I want to say, I, just a little anecdote. A guy came and, um, to a mentor and he, he said, listen, but I, I'm, uh, I'm tired of my wife. I don't care. I don't love her anymore. I've, I've kind of lost interest in her. And the guy said, the mentor said to him, he said, start acting in a loving way towards her and the love will return. And I found that to be the case too, like when we get into relationships. If you um, act in a caring way towards someone and invest in them, the mind is a funny thing. The mind will start to value that thing. So, and you'll see, because the downside of pickup is you become very good with women. It's hard to get into a relationship because you're passing up all this pussy, right? It's like, what? it's hard for one girl to compete. That's why rock stars and musicians, it's difficult when they're on the road because a girl, just one girl, no matter if she puts a donkey up her ass or does whatever, she can't compete with all the hundreds of groupies. So it, it's, this is a downside to pick up. And I'll talk a little bit about it so we have time. So if you want, no, no, I'm not done. If you, if you want to, well, let's do this because the energy is low in the room. Let's all stand up. I love this. And let's just stretch for one second. Uh, you, can, you can turn around if you want to, whatever. Okay. Roll your neck. <clears throat> All right, you can, everyone can sit down. How's this exactly? <laughs> Let me see what I. Uh, how far do I go till? How much time left? Quarter past six. Quarter past six. Okay, so quarter past six. Okay. So um, I want to talk for a second about. We talked about the male role is pretty simple. Let's talk about women. So obviously some of you guys, maybe you're in relationships or you want to get in a relationship or, and there's all types of women out there as we go out. And the question is, um, how do we make sense of it all? And like, are we going to end up marrying the wrong girl? Are we going to date the wrong one? Is she going to be a headache? And I want to talk a little bit about how females inhabit their own roles and to help you like, from, from my perspective, to help you make some choices. Um, and this is about mate selection, choosing someone who's a good, uh, is compatible. Actually, our earlier speaker had some interesting things to say. Like, he's silly, he likes a silly girl. Believe it or not, I'm actually a silly guy, and my girlfriend now is a really silly girl. But, um, but I like to fuck like uptight hot girls in high heels from the office with little dresses. So that, we'll get to this in a second. It becomes, it's an interesting thing. Um, so first, the first type of girl that everyone knows is the friend, okay? And a friend uh, is someone that you don't have sexual interest with, and it's, it actually disgusts you to, to, to think of like being sexual with her. And uh, did, how, I'm just curious: do guys in here have female friends? Yes or no? Or female friends? Friend, friends, not relatives. Like girls that you hang out with platonically, and like I don't know. She says, "Come over and watch Will and Grace" or something. Like watch a TV. Show. Okay, I'm just learning how to do it. It's kind of interesting, but that. I don't want anything out of them. So it's, a, it's kind of, I guess I want their company. But that, uh, a friend is someone that um, you have no sexual interest and it's just nice to spend time with. And the other thing is that there's no emotional risk there. Okay, I'm actually gonna get at this, see if I can make sense of this. There's some pretty heavy stuff in here in a second about emotional stuff, which is actually where I'm, I mean, I, I learned how to screw a lot of girls. I mean, I, and I wrote a big book on it that's classic. And um, that was my life for about seven years. And it, it's fun, definitely. But, I'm moving into a new chapter in my life where things, it's a little heavier and more complicated because I want kids and all this stuff. So there's finding the right partner. I'm gonna talk about a bit of that now. Um, but with a friend, there's no emotional risk, right? She can't, a female friend can't really hurt us in a way. She can't disappoint us, she can't cheat on us, and she can't deny us sex in a way that's frustrating. So it's like, friends are nice, but you don't get any depth there in a way because there's nothing at risk emotionally. The other ca category, there's only three categories in my mind. The other category of women is just for sex. And her behavior, these type of women, her behavior, and I, I'm curious, in, in, in Europe, it might be a little bit different. In, in the States, we definitely have this type, and in New York, they're very prevalent. Women that are really hot, sex, I mean, every guy would be drooling over them, like right out of the pages of uh, Maxim and FHM and all these things. But their behavior, is so irresponsible and difficult that you could never meet them as a partner because they would destroy you because they, they don't keep their word, they spend prof, in a profligate manner, they stay up all night, maybe they're doing drugs all the time. So what do you do with those type of women that are, turn us on but they have no, their behavior, if you bring them on board your ship, they're gonna sink the ship, okay? I don't know if guys know this type of girl, but they're, oftentimes they're very hot, okay? So you got a problem, you wanna screw them 
but you don't want anything to do with them because they're, they're dangerous, basically, and they're not sensible. So, and it, it, interestingly, it, it's linked because a hot girl usually, get, um, because she knows she's attractive and she can get, do that and get a guy to whatever, clean up after her, she, she misbehaves, okay? And in my book, there's no, I don't care how hot she is, uh, what you do in that situation, you put yourself in an environment where there's a lot of hot girls, like New York City or, or um, I don't know if Berlin's that way or London uh, or Moscow or something, and then you have very strong terms so that she, her behavior is checked. Okay, you never, never, and I'll get this, just because a girl's hot, she can never, at least in my book, she can never act out. Her behavior cannot be out of line. I don't care, I'll eject her and get another one. So um, this is the type of girl whose behavior, it, 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 her behavior is not a condition of engaging. In other words, uh, she has terrible behavior, but you still want to have sex, so you're not taking that into consideration. And you must protect yourself against what? Your wasted time, your wasted money, health risks in terms of she may, may or may not be honest with her sexual past, and um, also with your focus. These types of women can be very draining, too, if you're chasing them. I don't, let's just, maybe I hope I'm hitting a, a nerve here, but maybe not. Who, who in this room has chased a hot girl who was difficult and wanted to sleep with her, but you couldn't, couldn't get it done? And she was, she was impossible. She broke plans, for example. You made arrangements, you, made a res you spent some money or a hotel, and she said, oh, I can't do it. Okay, thank you for admitting that. I'm sure that's happened to many guys in this room. But um, those type of women, and, and I think a lot of young guys, make the mistake of choosing someone like that for a girlfriend, okay, because they think, oh, she's hot, the sex is going to be so great, and she's, she's on my arm, and this and that stuff, and this girl proceeds to destroy this guy's life, slowly but surely, by making him give up his terms. There's a, there's a very famous thing that I talk about often, and it says, um, if you, actually, aside from this, if you take nothing else from what I'm saying, this would be it. It says, a man is devastated when a relationship ends to the exact degree that he compromised his terms. Does anyone understand what that means? Yeah. Yeah. But what does that mean? You can put it in your words. Yeah, it means if you um, I don't know, give something up, your life, you change your way, you are, uh, you're living your life, and that's what you miss at the end. Yeah, exactly. Like something you lost over the way of the relationship. Right. The girl is not a problem. What we lose is we lose integrity because we gave something up that we cared about. So my Real, that, I'm not talking about in a real relationship, which I'll get to say. That's different when you negotiate changes. But when you're just trying to have sex, you never want to do that. It's always, believe me, I've turned away girls who weren't cooperative right in my front door. Hot, hot girls. But because they wanted me to give something of myself up that I didn't want to give up, the sex isn't worth it. Okay, you can spend 50 euros and get laid in Amsterdam. I mean, it's much better to, to turn her away because she's not going to just take a piece of you. She's going to eat into you like a, 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 a corrosion. So... You're exactly right about that. Um, so, but young guys make that mistake often because they, they, she's a hot looker and um, they try to tame this type of girl. And I've tried to do it too, like the nightclub girl, the party girl, the girl that every guy's trying to sleep with and she plays. Just be careful with this type. But also realize that you can have sex with her, but don't, don't in my opinion, don't try and make her a girlfriend because you have to enjoy her in the context of her lifestyle. A, a, a narcissistic, ego-driven girl like this, and I've been a guy like that. Okay, uh, it's going to be cause a, a lot of damage to you. But, and it, I'm not going to do it here. But I teach you how to sleep with these type of girls on your own terms, and my other stuff, because uh, you can enjoy them physically without risking emotional and financial terrain. And if anyone in this room is, has had uh, one night stands or, or you know screwed a lot, the way you can tell if you feel emotionally safe with a girl is if you can fall asleep with her right after you've had sex. If you, if you sit and she's sl lying there with a new girl and you're, you open your eyes and you're, you're kind of like this and you're like, you don't want to fart in bed and you don't want to do these kind of things, you're not comfortable, then you don't feel emotionally safe. And emotionally safe is a relationship, which I'll get to in a second, where you can, um, you can totally be yourself. So one of the highlights of girls who are like this and that are just used for sex is that they're not emotionally safe. Okay, now let's talk about relationships. In a relationship, Okay, she has to, I mean, the truth is, there are a lot of girls that are, you know, in the world, there are plenty of girls that are sexually attractive enough above a threshold, okay? I don't know, whatever, however picky a guy is, there's still thousands of girls that he'll screw. So, 
you want to choose girls that are above your, your threshold that you find attractive. But actually, funny enough, I mean, I've slept with models and, and actresses and even like average girls. It's not a lot of correlation to how hot it is in bed. Like some, some totally normal girls are much hotter sexually than a tall model who's like self-conscious and like worried about stuff and, and you know. So it's, it, actually the sex act is not correlated to how well, good looking a girl is. But um, when it comes to relationships, choose women that are, uh, meet your threshold looks wise, but after that it's all character. And what I found myself doing when I was swimming out in a sea of women is that I, I was, I didn't feel that these women had strong character. And I'm pretty demanding in my relationships in terms of expectations. Like, like my girlfriend lives in England and I live in New York and we travel all over together. We were, we were in London for New Year's, just in Amsterdam. She was um, in Corsica with me this summer. Like I have to have a woman that I can spend a lot, like make plans, drop a lot of money, this, and boom, and meet. Like no problems, no drama, she doesn't cancel. It's like she, we have to be on the same page in terms of with a, a lot of money and time at risk. And, and also fidelity because we're apart. Like that requires character because there's often, when you make a commitment, there's a lot of pressure to change and this and that. So you want to, you wanna, for a relationship, you want to screen for character much more than for looks. Because character is, look, every, first of all, also women get, you know, they get old, things start to sag, right? As they say, I just was reading, it's the cooking that, uh, cooking counts longer than, uh, lasts longer than kissing. In other words, in the long term, it's really the character and if you're compatible, not the looks. So approach only women that you would sleep with, but above that, if you're looking for a girlfriend, screen for character. And I'll tell you two, two ways that I knew my cur current girlfriend was high character. Um, one is that, I, when I first met her on our, our first date, I tried to get in her pants, I couldn't. Our second date, I did get in her pants, I didn't sleep with her, but I got her naked more or less. And I had told her a fake age, uh, it's a 29 or something, and a fake name, because at the time, I couldn't go around New York with my name, because all these girls recognized me. And I was still sleeping with a lot of girls, and, and when I used my real name, because I was on all these TV shows, I was getting blown out a lot. So my buddy was like, use a, use a street name, and so I, so I told her Christian, and we were in bed, and she, she first challenged me on my age. She thought I was younger. I'm 34, but she thought I was like 25. And I said, actually, no, I'm, I'm older. And let me tell you something else. My name is not, is not Christian. It's Paul. And let me explain. And she flipped out, understandably. She had been very, she's a quality girl. She had made herself sexually vulnerable, and I had lied to her. And she withdrew, and she said, I have to leave here. I've got to get out of here. She'd be very uncomfortable. It's betrayal. Well, she wanted to borrow... She didn't have any money. It was late at night in New York, and it's, she lived on it. So I, I, I gave her 20, and I was very strict with money at the time. I still am, but I gave her 20 bucks, and I said, listen, I know you're pissed off at me. Or you don't trust me at all, but this is a loan. A loan? This 20 bucks is not a giveaway. I want this money back, you know, even if we don't see each other. I was still, and she was like totally creeped out, but like, okay, and she left the building. She, we corresponded via text a couple days later, and she said, listen, I'll meet you because I owe you the money. But that's it. And we met and she made good on the money. In my experience, very few women have that skill. In other words, once they are emotionally angry, most women don't honor their word. I've had plenty, plenty of examples of women saying they're going to do something and then they just, oh, don't feel like it. I feel a little creepy. And, and then they just totally, you could have spent a lot of money and time and everything making arrangements and they'll walk right away just because they don't feel like it. That, that's a feminine quality. Men don't generally do that, right? We say we have our balls and our word. We're going to honor our word. Well, the fact that she honored it and even though she didn't like me and she didn't trust me, but she had said she would, told me that when she says something, she follows through, that's high character, which means I can trust her. And I can make plans with her. I can make decisions based on her word being steel. It's an anchor. All right. When you screw a lot of hot chicks, there's no anchors because they don't. They're not reliable. So, uh, and the other, the other uh, example was we were having. I used to, I used to share girls with buddies of mine, like other players. They'd get an inventory and they'd be like, "This girl loves to do it," and we would swap girls. <laughs> and um, the women in the back are like, "Ah, oh, creep." No, um, no longer. No. I, I'm a nice monogamous guy now. Um, but I was with my current girlfriend at the time, but she was just in, in the early stages. And my buddy came by to kind of say hi and check her out. And he started being kind of very insulting. In other words, he said, she was in bed with me. And he stopped and he's like, oh, I'd fuck you. Yeah, I'd do that. And he's like, when he's just very rude to her. And she's a young girl. He's much older and very, he's very experienced. And um, 
She put up great, in a very graceful way, she had put up boundaries and didn't let him treat her that way. Like turned it, I can't remember exactly what she said, but she turned it right back at him and he looked like the asshole. But she was not even vindictive. She was graceful about it. And I saw that she could protect herself. She had enough self-esteem to protect herself. So on that plus that we just enjoyed each other and we laughed a lot and she's a great girl and we had great sex. But those type of few things about her character really set her apart from the dozens of girls I was screwing. So, and that allows me to have a functional relationship uh, with a woman. So I just want to, guys out there who are looking for more than just sex, you know, approach girls that you find attractive. Uh, and by the way, in a relationship, you know, girls, what am I going to say? I, basically, relationship sex turns out to be not so much about, actually, hold on, I, I talk about this. Yeah, it turns out to be a, a lot more about how you feel than, than is the girl like the hottest thing on the block. In other words, you're like lying in bed after breakfast or like when you wake up and you're feeling happy and close and you have an erection. Well, you just want to put it inside her and start having sex. It's not as objective as the dating scene where you're hunting girls. So it's a relationship with sex is, is oftentimes very different than, than single sex. And so uh, cause it, as long as, it, as, as she meets your, your threshold for attractiveness, you're going to be okay. Scream for character to save a lot of problems. And I was going to tell another story, but uh, oh, yes. I have a yes, Pim. What I'm curious about, how did you steer it around? From the negative? She perceives you as a negative guy? Yeah, yeah. How did I turn it around? Um, I, I gave her in, sell, in marketing and selling, we say reason why. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 people will believe a lot if you tell them why, the reason why. And I said, listen, I betrayed your trust. I don't expect you to, you know, stick around, but the reason I did that is that I've been on a lot of, I'm in a tough position because I want to, I feel, maybe women feel, I feel that they may be entitled to know all about my background, but very few women can engage, well actually, I get some girls who just want to, I used to get girls who would just call me to have sex because they see me on TV and they want, but there, a lot of women, as soon as they found out that I've slept with all these women and that I've gone on, they protect themselves, they won't engage, but I, and I didn't, I felt, that's not fair to me. Like I want to still be able to be to date freely. So my so I have this background. I have baggage, and it, I had to use a different name. Like you know, like I, I said basically, like Prince has a stage name or something. It's it's like an entertainer name when I'm out hustling. And oftentimes these relationships don't go anywhere. It's just sex. But I came. I saw that I liked you, and I wanted to get honest. And now we have this situation. And she thought about it, and then very slowly. I didn't sleep with her actually for several more dates. Slowly, but we, 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 uh, uh, we, that was an interesting sound. Can you duplicate that? <laughs> that came out of your mouth, right? <laughs> um, so let me, uh, I know this is like classroom style and I'm kind of didactic here, but uh, instead of walking around, I'd rather focus on this. Um, let me also tell you about looks and my experience. I used to like really trashy girls, okay, like mini skirts too much makeup, they look like they've just been sucking some guy's dick. And I, I, just dirty, trashy girl that turned me on because their sex was so, and that, it's a great book, Sperm Wars by Robin Baker. He talks about why loose women are appealing. But there was something very, I felt very attracted to like trashy women. And not to say I don't anymore, but I, I realized that there's, it's a trashy girl you can only fuck once or twice and then you get tired of her. And it's like, I, at least me, I don't want that around. A, a classy girl, class, and I'm talking about like Jackie Onassis, uh, maybe Princess Di, maybe um, Marilyn Monroe, these type of icons. A woman with class remains sexually interesting for a long, long time. So part of my journey is to move away from trashy girls and kind of, like my girlfriend now is very classy. And I, I try and reinforce that behavior realize that classiness actually is, and probably some of the older gentlemen in the audience will understand this more than young guys, because you know, young guys, and we're raised on internet porn, it's like, you just want to see the tits right away, you don't see it. But there's something to a classy girl that you can keep going back to sexually, whereas you can burn out a trashy girl like after two pops. Men are driven by novelty. We're very turned on by novelty. Like, if you go to strip club or any, like Playboy, right? We don't have the same issue every, every month. They change the girls, because it's exciting to us. Because it, basically it's biological. We want to spread our seed to as many girls as possible. So novelty means a new girl where we can spread our seed. That's what, how it comes from. So um, we're drawn to novelty. 
And a girlfriend doesn't really have that. And she also doesn't have her light on. Single girls have their light turned on, meaning I'm available, like look at me, they dress provocatively. A girlfriend doesn't need to do that because she has a guy by her side. So I'm also learning to not see some hot, this is the other consequence of pickup. If you get good with women and you can pluck them and nail them, so to speak, you see, you see you're with a girl and you walk. I used to not see girls outside the bedroom, by the way, because my buddy in New York, he's, he's my age, he slept with 400 girls, and, uh, or almost like 380 something, he keeps track. He won't leave the bedroom with the girl. Why? Because if he takes one girl out that he's had sex with, he feels totally inhibited to talk to the new girl. So a hot one walks by and he feels restricted. If he talks to her, this one gets pissed off. If he doesn't anything, then he's like, fuck, pissed off at this one for restricting him. So he basically just has sex with them and then goes out as a, as a lone ranger to get new ones. Well, I'm not in that position right now. And so I'm with my girlfriend and I see, I notice other girls and I compare and this and that, which is not helpful. And I, I have to realize like these women oftentimes are, are strutting their stuff because they're trying to attract male attention. Keep in mind, girlfriends and wives are not. So this is for the guys who are in relationships and thinking like, uh, uh, is this right for me, is this not? And, and for pickup artists, if you really hone your skill, and I don't know how much time we have, but I wrote the top 10 reasons to get out of, this was published on Cliff's List, which is, I don't know if anyone here knows Cliff's List, but it's a big, it's one of the original seduction posts in, 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 the, in the US. And I wrote, this was a very popular thing, I wrote the top 10 reasons to get out of the game. And it's a lot harder than you think. Like you're here to learn how to screw women and, and, and be the man and go in and get the hot ones and get them naked and all this stuff. Okay, great. When you get to that state, you're gonna have a hard time putting it down. It's, a, it's like, I wouldn't say it's an addiction, I don't wanna call that, but like, it's gonna be hard to focus on one girl when even if you care about her, when you know you can have new ones, relatively easy. So just know that when you get into this, if you flex, if you get this muscle really strong, it's gonna, it's gonna be a challenge to transition to monogamy. And as far as I can see, I'm the only guy who's been able to do it. Like I was talking with one of our first speaker, maybe there are other guys, but a lot of them have weird situations, in my opinion. It's like girlfriends like bisexual and they're doing threesomes and it's not like a, I mean I want kind of like a standard wife, man, monogamous, you know, five, five, I want a lot of kids actually, 10 kids, and like that kind of model, I don't want some alternative lifestyle model. So um, that transition is harder than you think for as guys get good. Um, so let me, let me, let's see, ta, 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 ta. okay, um, couple, couple of things that are most important in a relationship I've found. Um, the mo single most important thing about a woman, and it relates to her character, as again, only approach women that you like to sleep with, but um, is how she treats you. The quality of how she treats you is the most important aspect of a woman. A lot of guys get hung up on hot girls and they're willing to accept lousy treatment. Like, and I have, what is this? Like some guy might say to himself, oh, she's a 10 and I'm only a five, so she treats me pretty well for a 10. Well, <laughs> I don't think that's a good situation in my opinion. Like. When, when you're in a relationship with a girl, exclusive, or anyone, I mean, anything that's more than just a bang, it's, it's fundamentally important how she treats you. That's the number one thing. And for me, the qualities I look for are um, how does she handle disappointment, or when I say no, does she throw a tantrum, is she a drama queen? Like you get a really, some of these, these hot chicks that used to getting everything they want, you tell them no, it does two things. It turns them on, but also they can, in a, within a relationship, they can throw a tantrum too. So you have to, someone who's mature enough to handle the word no when you set a boundary. Also, how does, how does a woman in your life listen to you? You know, you, you've all been to these clubs where the girl's like, yeah, uh-huh, you're chewing gum. They're like, oh yeah, sure. And they're looking around for the next hot guy. Oh yeah, okay, yeah, cool. And, and like that, and they're not paying attention. Like, for me, it's very important that the girl's like, though, that type of girl, like the club girl or the little hottie, impatient, looking around, She's multitasking, she's like texting, oh yeah, sure, yeah, I'll hear you, I got it, yeah. Like, listening is one of the most crucial things we do with another human being. And for me, a big test with the screen for a quality girl is like, when she, when she listens, does she stop what she's doing? Is she looking at me? Does she, um, does she hurry me along or does she be patient for whatever I say? And is she looking at me and not looking around? Like, the quality, this is very important, the quality of how a woman listens will tell you a lot about her. So, and a lot of these hot, you know, think that the cat's meow type of girls are not good listeners. So keep in mind that 
try and nail them, but be careful about bringing them on as a, as a, as a partner. Um, and as I said earlier, the, 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 um, the way to, to test for emotional safety is, is uh, how well you sleep next to a girl. Like, can you fall asleep right away? And if you don't, if you feel like there's a little bit of a stranger in your bed, which some of you guys will feel as your skills get good and you're having sex with a lot of women, that's because you don't feel emotionally safe. And I know it's not cool and sexy to talk about emotions at a men's thing, but the reality is like, women aren't gonna hurt us physically, generally speaking, unless you're Wayne Bobbitt. I don't know if you guys know who that is. Or, and you can learn some very specific techniques to protect yourself financially, but women can hurt us emotionally by betrayal, disappointment, us liking them and, and, and them fading, all these kind of things. Obsession, obsessing about girls. So these are all emotional risks. Um, and I, I'm almost done and um, I might just list those things if we want and then I'll take some questions. Um, yeah, again, this all ties into role because it's, it's like what do, what do I want? Well, right now, the way I'm looking, yeah, go ahead. I have a question. Yeah. What can we do to protect ourselves from this emotional... Do, yeah, do those things I told you. Um, see, how she beha see how she handles her word. Like, spend some time before... Look, if you can learn how to, and I'll talk... I used to be a cold-hearted bastard. I mean, part of the reason I was good at sleeping with a lot of women is I was, I was emotionally damaged myself, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Like, I was able to shut it off. And women, unfortunately, women go crazy for a guy who's shut off because they're trying to get trying to access you emotionally, and they'll give you sex to do that. If you're shut off, it's, it's very powerful with women. But I don't want to live my life that way. And um, so you can have sex by being shut off. But before you um, really invite a woman in and trust her, uh, you, you want to test her. You want to test that she keeps her word even when she's dis angry at you and disappointed. You want to see how she listens. And you want to see how she responds when you tell her no. And if she responds maturely in all those, you've got a, a good girl on your hands. And um, you also want to, like, I'm 34, my girlfriend's 22, I want a big family. So my combination, this talks about roles. What is my goal? I have kind of an idea of being a leader of my family, a king of my castle kind of thing. For me, it's important that I have someone of very high character because I, I, I want to live, I lead a very dynamic life. I travel. I, I make good money, I have a lot of friends. Like, I need someone who I can rely on. Like, a flimsy girl is gonna break down underneath me pretty soon, she's gonna have her, basically she's gonna have issues that cause her to just collapse because she want. so I need a strong woman of high character and I want her young enough that she has a lot of childbearing years ahead. At 22, she can have a lot of kids. And that's a hard combination to find, and attractive, good sex. Like, a lot of women become mature by the time they're 35 but, and they're young, when they're still hot, they can get what they want, it's ego. They don't develop that side, so they're very, their character is very weak, and so it's hard to trust them. So um, you have to define what you want out of the interaction relationship. Um, last thing here, you know, w one reason, why am I talking about emotions? To, to one degree or another, everyone in this room is emotionally damaged, okay? We, we, none, of, none of us are perfect, whether come from divorced parents, Parents die, parents were abusive. I don't know if this stuff is talked about in German culture or not, but in the States we talk about this stuff. People, everyone has emotional baggage, okay? And they've had loss, and they've had grief, and they've had betrayal, and, and, and a lot of guys I know that are very good with women are the most fucked up, unfortunately, because they've been emotionally damaged to a degree where they don't feel, and when you don't feel, you don't have approach anxiety. You can come up, and I can just put my hand in a girl's vagina, like right, like that, and I don't have anything blocking me, because I can do it really, I don't have any voices or any hesitancy. So I was, when I was probably, I've had a kind of a crazy past, but when I, I'm healthier today than I was a few years ago, but a few years ago I was really affected with women. As I get healthier, and my heart opens up, and I'm more, I'm nice, like our last speaker, and I'm generous, and I invite you, and I, my ability to hustle girls drops a little bit. So there's an, there's an element of that. I don't know if that resonates with anyone or if they've seen that in speak. I mean, this guy, Mystery, is probably, he's got his issues, obviously, right? So, but it, he, it, it makes him good at what he does. And I don't even know exactly all his stuff. But it's like, the point is that like, what I've seen is real good hustlers often have an emotionally damaged side. Now, 
we can heal through connection with a, a if we're heterosexual, through a connection with a, a, a wonderful woman who's patient and we share with and we trust and we start to trust ourselves and trust her and build some of that back. And that's kind of the journey I'm on. You know, Frank Sinatra has a song called The Wee Small Hours of the Morning. You know Frank Sinatra? Do people know him? He's a great crooner from the States. And he has a song called The Wee Small Hours of the Morning. He has a line that says, when your lonely heart has learned its lesson. And he's talking about running around sleeping with a lot of girls. Well, I came to a point where that wasn't doing it for me. As, as, I, as I, I don't share here, but I think I see, I got to a point where, uh, and this is going to sound graphic, but I felt like I was fucking corpses. In other words, the bodies, the heads changed, but the bodies were all the same. And I, and I didn't feel anything. And I, it's because I was very good at what I did, but it was, it's not how I wanted to live. So I made some changes and I, I pulled back. And this girl, right at the same time, entered my life. And I said, because of her character and because I didn't sleep with her right away, I, she got my attention and I gave her a second look and a third look and a fourth look. And then I said, wow, this is a quality girl. I don't want to walk away from this. So, um, and she, you know, we had a great, she was very interested too. So, because I come from a different spectrum. She's a very healthy girl with a totally different background. So, um, so anyhow, that's why emotional safety is very important and an emotional bond. But you only want to extend yourself emotionally with a healthy girl or else you're going to be very hurt. As, you know, it's, you know, a small example of that is that you're talking to a very hot girl at a nightclub. And you think it's going well, and she's, you feel she's out of your league, but you feel connected. And she says she's going to the bathroom, and she never comes back. I don't know if that's happening to anyone here, but that's, she just betrayed you emotionally. So you're going to, a guy that hurts a guy, and, and you, that's a small example, but you want to, if you're playing the game, you want to be very careful about how much you extend yourself emotionally with, un, if they're not tested, if the women are not tested, because they can, women will, will do some awful things. Um, and then... I think I'm going to leave the last five minutes for questions. I, anyone who wants to see this, and I can email it to you guys, it's, as I decided to get into a monogamous relationship, I talked about 10 reasons why, it's a, why a guy would ever, why, why would a guy ever decide to leave variety of abundant pussy coming all the time? Once you figured out how to get it, why would you turn your back? Well, there are reasons, and I wrote the top 10, and we can talk about it afterwards. The, top, the, the, the first, the, it's like Letterman. I start at the t 10, 9, 8, 7. Number one reason to get out of the game is sleep. Because when you're having a cycle of chicks, I, I was always tired, banging all night, up in the morning, getting them out, getting my day on the road, da da da, a lot of sex. And uh, sleeping with a new girl, at my peak, I would be, have two girls on rotation a week, regulars, and like three or four new girls per week that I was having sex with. That's, I mean, if you think about it, that's pretty, that's a lot of fucking chicks. And um, no pun intended, I mean, it's a lot of girls. And, and, and a lot of these are strangers in my bed. I don't sleep that well. So the number one reason, actually, I was just getting exhausted. Uh, so it's, it's, uh, that's something I'm sure as you guys get there, you'll start to experience it. So let me wrap up. Uh, again, this is the most important thing I said. Your success in life and with women will be determined by how well you play your role. So know your role. And we're talking about sex and women. But know your role at work. Know your role with your parents. Treat them well as a good son. Know your role. Uh, to your, to your role as a citizen is to pay your taxes. Everyone, you have roles, and when it comes to women, if you don't, if you don't do it properly, there's a lot of shit that comes of it. So um, we have a, probably two questions. If we have two questions in the audience, we can, yeah. Um, I'm interested in the role of the hustler, mm -hmm. but that role fits not very well for me at the moment. How can I learn to play that role? Buy my stuff. That's a very blatant thing. <laughs> Go. Um, can you see? Where's that? Do we have a guy who could? Ow, my leg fell asleep. Yeah, I'm kidding about. I'm, I'm. I'm not kidding about buying it. But I mean, there's stuff out there. I. I haven't met a guy who's in. Uh, we lost it. But can we, Alex? Is there a way to get that website up? If you go here and you. Um, and you uh, look at the stuff I've done. You read Getting Laid in New York, read Attraction Formula, watch my New York seminar. I'll take you right through it, every step of the way, like furniture, furniture placement. If you're sitting by side and her leg, your, your knees come up here, what do you do with your hand? How do you, right? You can only reach a girl's vagina if she's standing up or if she's on the back. If she's sitting like that, you can't get in, right? So I talk about, I know I spend time talking about the, the body has to be straight. You think it's funny, but it's not. Like, or, um, you know, this, this is a problem with getting action, a belt, right? I used to go, I'd get the girl worked up, 
but she hasn't felt my dick yet. I go into the bathroom and whip this off while I piss because when a girl's horny, if, if in her head she's thinking, I don't want to, she's not sure if she wants to have sex. Well, this, like this, tells her, oh, oh, red flag, red flag, sex, 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 sex. If you don't have a belt on, she can just reach down and then she touches a hard and she, oh. So it's, these are very technical things that'll teach you how to, I mean, that's just about the logistics of the bedroom. But, but that's, that's how much detail I go into it. And then um, I have a whole video of picking up tons of girls you can watch. And I, it's actually the thing I'm most proud of. We shot it in Texas because the laws are different. You don't have to get their signature release. So the girls never, to this day, they don't know they've been filmed because I only have to sign off. In New York, it's dual signature release, but in Texas, so we flew to Texas, hired a camera crew. I was wearing the same shit, actually. I mic'd me up, and went just on the street. And it got rained out, actually. It was only a day. It was not even, it was an afternoon and one morning, but I, I got a lot of numbers. And you could, what I did is I watched these again and again. Why were these girls giving me their numbers so easily? And I watched body language, what I said, and I, just like a, a coach will watch a tape again, and it, why is that play working? He passes the ball, rewind, he passes the ball. Mm. And I made a lot of notes underneath it, and I was like, that's why that worked. Stuff I hadn't even realized, like there's a reason she's responding, and it, it might be the way my shoulders, or if I, or it, it's all mostly verbal. I mean, body language is some, but it's the way, uh, it's a lot of detail, but I go through exactly why this is working, so, and so that you can do the same thing in your own life. So. Go to this, yeah, go to this website and you can see, that'll teach you how to be a, if you take that, add water, bake it 90 minutes, you'll be a New York, New York hustler. So we ran a bit over, Pim, I'm sorry. Uh, that's my uh, concept for today, rolls.